Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Mervyn Stutter. I do a Pick of the Fringe show up at the Edinburgh Festival every year. But as you will know by now, there is no Edinburgh Festival this year. But uh, the Pick of the Fringe show, um, we, we research carefully and find the best acts and bring them on. And then I have a chat with them after they've shown a piece of their work. So I thought, well, why not just keep the interview bit going? So um, I've got hold of my good friend, Alexis Dubas. Hey, there he is. Otherwise hello. known to you all probably as Marcel Le Comte. Um, uh, Hey, we oui. uh, a fringe favourite, and uh, well, I mean, how many years is it now, Alex? Well, last year was my my tenth year. It was my uh, it was my tenth show, Numero Dix, uh, No yes, Dix, as yeah. it was written on the poster. It was my uh, it was my tenth Marcel, uh, my tenth year of Edinburgh, but not my tenth show because I tend to I tend to go a bit silly when I go up to Edinburgh. So I do I usually do a couple of shows. Yes. If not more. Yeah. So, you know, I've so lost count. I don't know how many shows I've done. Christ, now no idea. But when did uh, Marcel? appear because you were well, so working was, as alexis weren't you you did studenty stuff oh uber yeah. sausage if i remember correctly well remembered yeah that's 99 <laughs> i did uber sausage as a as as the title suggests a very studenty sketch uh troupe and it was uh, we had a blast doing that it was great fun um and then solo stuff i started yeah. doing 2008 uh, i did the swearing show history of uh, ruddy brief history of swearing <laughs> right. which uh, remarkably sold well in scotland who'd, who'd have known who'd have thought? Um, 6 p.m. free show about swearing in Scotland. That no, sold, sold quite well. And um, you had free drinks as well. Was, yeah, <laughs> then, uh, uh, 2009 was when Marcel was born on and, the fringe. That was, yeah. And how was he born, Alexis? How, how was he, he born? Appear? He was incubated in Australia, actually. He right. was. Um, I did my first. Uh, I did a 40 minute show on an incredibly sweaty rooftop venue. It was like a hut on a roof in Adelaide, uh, Adelaide Fringe, uh, back in February 2009, uh, having done him on the circuit for a bit. And then, well, before the circuit, it was my own little club, my experimental club in London Bridge. You ran a which, club, didn't you? Yeah. I, I ran a club for about seven seven, uh, seven years, yeah. Wow. Yeah, in London Bridge. Uh, basically, what? just kind of putting on my favourite weird acts and with, with my mate Cy Thomas. And the it started off a straight stand-up, and then we started doing a, an experimental night where it was anything but straight stand up so oh, it had right. to be had to be sketch music weird stuff especially weird stuff was especially welcomed um and so we'd have um oh we had all sorts down there and it, uh, um uh, tim key quite a few times paul foot came down and did a show in, in entirely uh, did a 20 minute set in a made-up language <laughs> um phil k came down and just was did what phil k does and was i think he was thrown out once for you know just being <laughs> no, a too much not. Oh, yeah, yeah I don't know, if you can believe it. And oh, we had all sorts down there. It was fantastic. And then Marcel became the regular host. He, he didn't have say, a surname back then. Was Marcel your, your experimental moment? Yeah, it was the experiment that went right. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and very right. But it's been a very huge. Right. It's been it's huge. I mean, you've performed Marcel globally, and that's no, that's no over, a lie or overstatement, is it? Yeah, it's like my, the whole of Marcel's career, well, the whole of my career as Marcel has been me attempting to be, become the beast that Marcel is, if you see what I mean. Like, like he, he has to be this global touring artiste. He has to be this Renaissance man doing poetry and songs and kind of all that stuff. So I kind of, I had to become Marcel more and more. I had this kind of fictional character that I, I, I had to meet his lofty ideals myself. He's wonderful in theatre spaces because audiences are sitting waiting. So at the festival where I've seen him, he's fantastic because Marcel walks onto stage very slowly, barefoot, in a, a nice sort of 19, almost 1960s sharp suit, glass of uh, Merlot or whatever, and, and it basically says very little and, and, and has a sneering look in his eyes to the audience. Uh, but, but how does that work in comedy clubs? Because it's a very, it's not just hit the stage and, and grab them, is it? It's quite no, reverse well. energy. Well, interestingly, I found I originally found it easier in comedy clubs because at a comedy club you've got the compare, so you've got someone who's coming on and, and, and getting the energy from the crowd and yeah. whipping them up, and you've got the ringmaster essentially as yeah. the compare, and then it's the contrast of having this this character oh, yeah. amble on slowly with a glass of wine <laughs> and, and almost undo all of the good work <laughs> that the compare has done like, for the first 10, 15 minutes by just giving them nothing, aloof, haughty looks, and no energy whatsoever. So it's kind of easier to do the do the circuit. When when I first started doing my, my hour long shows as Marcel, it was the realization that I would not have that compare. I wouldn't. I would have to get up and and shuffle on with 
just starting from zero energy. Yeah, yeah. So, so for that first show, it was I was booked into far too big a venue for the first show. I was in a hundred and sixty seater for my first show as wow. myself in that um, uh, belly dancer in the underbelly, which is the spank room, that big sort of uh, downstairs sweaty den. Yeah. And uh, um, so, especially in a room that size, I was like, well, I've got no comp. I can't just go in that low energy so I had for that first show I had dancing girls and an accordionist good idea <laughs> to open it to, to make it a, a little bit more cabaret which Marcel obviously would have to have to do and um, to, to, to inject that bit of energy to play the role with the compare but not even a simple device like an off stage very loud excited compare uh, to I did that for one show I had Sarah Louise Young yeah. Uh, do a do a um it was a really operatic intro it was like a cacophonous intro <laughs> just, just bursting in that that scared the shit out of people it, 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 was, it was singing oh what was how did it go oh, the, the show was called marcel lucan is and it was uh <laughs> marcel lucan is and always will be so much greater than you and it was a, all that sort of thing. and it was just an absolute operatic cacophonous that, that made people sit up in their seats and then boom shuffle on and I'm, and I'm guessing this year you made plans like so many other artists uh, made plans for a Fringe 2020 as Marcel or you say that I was going to have a year off <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't break for me well, that's, Weirdly, ruined, that's ruined that link then isn't it yeah. <laughs> well I'm, I'm getting FOMO from. I'm, 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 I'm missing the Fringe more than ever now, oh. now that it's not on even yeah. though I was never planning on doing it this year I was going to have a fallow year this year I was going to, I was going to have a year off um, I was, well the plans were I was going to be doing a Soho Theatre run and I was going to be doing Adelaide yes. Cabaret Festival uh, in June and I thought well that's enough <laughs> so, so your lockdown Cancelled. Cancelled. wasn't, wasn't uh, peppered with preparation not preparation is it happening? Is it not? You were just a family man because uh, you've got young kids, now, haven't you? I've got a little kid. I've got a two-year-old now. I'm Wonderful. dipping my feet in his pool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely. I'm, I'm taking over his paddling pool while he's having a nap. And this is this is. I mean, this is great. This, is, I thought this would be so uh, medicinal. Oh, you've just your volume's gone down a bit. How oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Wave your computer around again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will. Did I drop it in the paddling? That's better. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. I just wave, wave yeah. it around a bit. That's it, yes. If te technology doesn't <laughs> look work, at, hit the side. <laughs> look at two, Look at us two fringe veterans lost without any uh, stage managers or tech. Oh, what do we do? Wave it around. <laughs> no, I do this live. I don't do it through... I don't do it through the ether like this. Um, so, so, well, you mentioned Adelaide, and, and I was thinking about... You know, the Australian festivals, because well, I was going to ask you later about future of festivals. But Melbourne, of course, the comedy festival there, Melbourne's been hit with this uh, a massive COVID uh, out outbreak. Um, when does Melbourne usually happen? Is it spring? Melbourne Comedy Festival is Mar uh, April, yeah. May. March, yeah. March, April, May, April, May. Um, and Melbourne Fringe is September, October. Right, so the Melbourne Festival, they... They must be thinking, is it or isn't it? Or, or is it definitely yeah. gone? Well, right now we're at the stage of if you want to do those festivals, you have to kind of start thinking about, uh, uh, you know, applying now. Yeah. So things like So even though New Zealand is um, they're doing all right so far, they, they, they've managed it pretty well. And obviously, you know, in a country where... Um, people are so spaced so far apart <laughs> more, more sheep than people <laughs> their whole life is socially distanced yes yeah pretty much they're used to it but um so for, for new zealand I was, I was hoping to do new zealand comedy festival next year but of course you would have to start applying uh, within the next few weeks usually for that and who so uh, who knows i mean right. maybe new zealand will have uh, a more local festival with local acts which might not be a bad thing they've got some fantastic acts out there uh, doing, com doing brilliant comedy stuff mm. out in New Zealand so maybe that would be a chance to, for, to, to showcase Well the other thing for you know, someone like New Zealand is that do they want British acts to come over like British people because I think right. the, when they got rid of their Covid moment they got rid of it completely and then they got one case brought in by a Brit you know so can we can we can we, can we export ourselves even to arts festivals safely? No, I wouldn't have thought so. So it's I mean, and I've been talking to people about will Edinburgh be going on next year? You know, well, who knows? Well, it's you bad. know, it finished. It was cancelled the beginning of April, wasn't it? And they are talking about a second wave peaking in February, March. Well, that's damn close to an April to me. And yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it it I think it's vulnerable. I'd I'd hopefully not because I, you know. 
Hopefully not, but we'll see. Um, so you, what have you been doing during lockdown? Have you been doing product? Have you been putting stuff out? Everyone's run to online. I, uh, I've, put, I've been doing sort of songs because there's a lot of stuff to write about at the moment and well, putting right. them up yeah. on, a, a, on my new... I've got a new YouTube channel. Hurrah! So um, I've got songs up there. Um, yeah, great. And, and people are uh, catching. That's great. Have you put stuff out? I've been making content. Um, making content? I, Good lads. As they say, as the youth say. Yeah. I've, uh, well, I, do, do you know what? Like for the first couple of weeks or, or more, actually, maybe even the first month, I just kind of didn't do very much at all. I, I, I suddenly realised that an enforced break was actually what I needed. I, I, I've been working quite hard, yeah. to be honest. And, oh, I, and I hadn't really taken a break. And any, any break that I had taken was usually tagged on to some festival overseas or something like that. So it wasn't really a break. So I kind of, I, I, I guiltily relished it a little bit and just kind of and kind of went, no, actually, now it's time to breathe out a little bit or breathe I, in or whatever. Well, I had no guilt. I had no guilt at all. My mind was a worry of... Uh, because I'm much older than you, have I retired without knowing oh, it? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, because yeah, I'm not doing retired. anything. I'm actually looking at the goldfish and drinking tea, you know, or um, yeah. planting things and trimming things. In the... Have I actually bloody retired without knowing it, you know? Yeah, right. But actually, yeah, I, think cool. the, I think the break's been great. I've enjoyed the, the not, although the income, missing, missing the income, obviously, but... But but not having to make product and, and, and get out there. I mean, for forty five years I've been doing that, and it's really yeah. really very very nice to stop for a few months. I'm at it yeah. again now, but maybe that's because I took a break. I don't know. But it's no, interesting it's you had I mean, that. It, it felt good to have that breathing space, and also like I said, I've got two year old, oh, so which, which means I just get to do dad things and get to watch him develop. He doesn't know what's going on. He's he's too young to know, so he just he's happy to be taken to a park around the corner, <laughs> find a stick. Find a stone, put it in his pocket. He's happy as happy as anything. Um, and also, having a two-year-old, I, I sort of didn't have, you know, for the past two years, I've not had a huge amount of social life, so I had a little bit of money saved up. Yes, you know, that, good. You do, was, don't you? If you don't yeah. go out, I've, I've suddenly realised there's more money in the bank account. Why was that? I'm not going to the pub. That's yeah. right. Yes, it's, it's mainly the pub. <laughs> Twenty pound around and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, I've got a note here of Lucon's Louche Lockdown Lounge. Has he? Has he? Has Lucon's Louche Lockdown Lounge been working? It was all right. It was yeah. I, I did. A, I did. A, it was an online Marcel show that I did for a bit. Um, and it, uh, basically, it, st- <laughs> it kind of. I don't know how you would draw this graph, but it was kind of the the content got better and better. I think as the uh, audience got smaller and smaller, and it was and so I was doing it as just a, a free thing online as Marcel. People yeah. could make that donations, and at first people were very generous, and a lot of people were tuning in, and then. When it was me just riffing, basically, not riffing, I was writing stuff and I was kind of doing, and the, the, what I got from that actually was I was getting people to give me a, um, uh, a poetry title or suggestion or theme or something like that, and then I would do a new poem every week. So I, so it was every Friday, so I would actually, I came out of it with some quite fun poems on really bizarre themes that I'd never have uh, I thought of myself. <laughs> Come with myself. There was like, was it the Uber driver on a Tinder date? There was the... Um, the big blue butt plug blues, you know, it was, I mean, it, was, it, got, it got really weird. And so I just, I, it was just a nice little mental exercise to just be and writing one week. These, uh, these poems every week. One week. Every week, yeah, every week. Right, write, write the poems every week. I think that's the great thing. It's, it's deadlines, isn't it? The other thing that got flabby Absolutely. this year was there was no deadlines for anything. Oh, God, if I didn't have a deadline, I'd have done nothing at all. So, yeah. yeah. And also, I was part of the short lived but fun uh, Lost Comics, which was set up by Phil, Phil Nickel and Kerry Marks. Oh, yeah. long, st- long story why it's not going ahead anymore, but it was really fun. So, they, they were getting people to do, getting comics to do two videos uh, uh, a month, okay. uh, which. Uh, yeah, which I was doing from home. I had my wife helping me. Just doing. I bought a green screen, a proper sort of green screen, and I was making just some stupid videos to some of my poetry. I was just doing some comedy sketches or that sort of thing. And again, just kept me stuff that I could do from my own home. Uh, and there was one. There was one that I did. It was. It was a really stupid gag. It was basically uh, me pretend it looked like I was pretending to be filming on a green screen from home with like a, a fake park background and then the reveal was I was actually in the park and I just put a picture of the park as the background and trained, so I think I was doing it on the windiest day of the year and there's the outtakes are way better than the actual footage of me just trying to set up this green screen we want to see Tod- the outtakes <laughs> toddler running about right wife trying to catch up with a toddler me getting the, the green screen blown on my head but um, if, if the Fringe is happening next year, is the plan yeah. that you're going to do it? 
I think so. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I've missed Great. it so much. Yes. I would like to. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. It's. It's. You say about the future of festivals, like the future of shows, is an oh, interesting no. one because you can't not talk about this year and yet so people are so very bored of it like what what else can you add to it oh we did we did online quizzes no uh, we, we we drank like too much we uh and nothing really happened in our lives you know it's in the problem in the is that socially distanced uh, auditoriums uh, it's difficult to do that financially oh well the logistics alone yeah, yeah as well is, is is just ridiculous but you know um so i, I don't mean, know don't, I don't know whether the festival will happen even on a financial basis. I mean, I think most people go out there expecting to make some sort of a loss <laughs> at some point in their lives. Maybe we have to consider that no one's really we're going to break even or make a loss. Because if the people don't come out, even if it's allowed, you know, are people going to come? It's a, it's a tricky one. Yeah, and the current thing that down in London seems to be... Um... Uh, on, uh, not on, well, uh, the online shows. I think we're, again, people liked them at first, and then realised the limitations of them. And I, so I did a, an online cabaret show as well for uh, twelve weeks. Actually, I did a, of, uh, cabaret domestique, right. um, just just having my favourite acts trying to do what they do, hula hooping in their living room, doing burlesque in their corridor, that sort of thing, which was super fun. Um, but uh, I think now it's like the open air gigs, isn't it? Now we're in summertime. But again, try to try putting on an open air <laughs> Edinburgh festival. That's just well, trouble, isn't it? I think we're all going to go back, rogues and vagabonds, back on, back on the street, touring players, back to Shakespeare, put on the motley, mate. Alexis Dubas, how lovely to talk to you, Alexis, and uh, hopefully we'll all meet up properly in the flesh uh, at, a, at an Edinburgh next the year. Side. Yeah? I really, really, really hope so. Yeah, right. lovely to talk to you, mate. I miss, I miss the pink jacket. It's, it's not so <laughs> lovely to talk. Bye for now. Ta-ra. Well, that was comedian Alexis Dubas, better known for his comedy persona Le Bon Viveur, Raconteur and Flaneur, Marcel Le Comte. And now, as there is no Edinburgh Fringe this year, if you wanted to see his show from last year, Numero 10, then just click on this link. Right, thanks for watching. There's more interviews to come, so for updates, do subscribe to this channel. It's free to do so. Right, that's it. Bye for now.